yeah. done research into the impact of, of porn on young people. And, and just tell us, first of all, what you found and then what you make of the way this has been covered and, and the, the online safety of improving bill. it. That's yeah. what's all to right. So in a previous life, I edited Lance Mag Loaded. In fact, Eamon, you're a great friend of ours. You often would come to our, to our lunches and you, you, yeah. you're in the magazine. Yeah. And, and then... I was the such a pin-up. You were. Those days. Yeah. Yeah, you, no, you, you really were. You became a great friend of the magazine. Page three um, of your time. But then, but then um, online pornography yeah, became very politicised during the David Cameron era, um, where the Daily Mail, God bless it, still going nine years later, attempted to sort of clear up the internet um, by introducing age verification. Now, way back in 2013, I um, fronted a documentary for Channel 4 called Porn on the Brain, and we recruited 19 young lads who felt they were addicted to porn, and we put them in a brain scan study. And we showed that their brains were behaving like heroin brains or cocaine brains. They were responding to pornography in a way that just drove them into this kind of state. And then we were talking they, about... They were aware their behaviour was abnormal or heightened or whatever, were they? they yeah, actually... because it was affecting their, their livelihoods, it was affecting their ability to hold down a job, it was certainly affecting their ability to hold down a relationship, and it was affecting their their attitude to, towards women in, yeah. in, in an unhealthy way. So what we attempted to do was have a, a constructive conversation about what to do about this. And what we shouldn't attempt to do about this is to switch off the internet. It's, it's this wrong-headed, numbskulled policy. Well, why do you say that? Because it can't work. Um, I've, I've spoken to about 50,000 teenagers across Britain um, since then. And as, as I said earlier, from, from the very elite schools to, to the, the most sort of you know, council estate um, rough and tumble schools. And the problem is the same. And that is unfettered access just leads to uh, a changing, uh, particularly amongst young men. But it's not a damaging change. It's something that can be talked about, but it won't be ever solved by, by, by trying to close down the internet. Because, you know, prohibition and censorship never, ever works and it won't here. Um, Amy, you take a different approach to this story. I mean, you, you accept that probably you're never going to be able to kill it off in, yeah. in that sense because it's also the whack-a-mole approach. Yeah. But do you really think we should just wash our hands of trying to clean it up at all and just let our youngsters, you know, go and find what they want and, and try and educate them on how best to manage that? I think, I think it has to be both. I, I don't disagree with you, Martin. I think that hopefully what this prompts is a wider conversation about the role of porn on, on the brains and the behaviours of particularly young men, but young people across the board. Yeah. I, I think we can differentiate as well here to some extent on age. Like, yes, I, I agree. I suspect come high school playgrounds, teenagers will work out ways around this. But we also know that, you know, under 10s are being exposed to pornography while surfing the internet. We can't switch the internet off. It's way too important for education, for socialising, etc., etc. But I, I think we can ask these extremely wealthy tech giants to be doing their bit. That, that that seems reasonable. I, all too often, I think we put the onus on parents. Yeah. You know, and we ask parents who, frankly, know less about the internet often than their children do. We ask them to try to, mm. to sort of police the behaviour yeah. of their kids. But in the same way that we expect the state to keep our streets safe to an extent, and yes, of course, parents advise, we should think about the internet in, in the same sort of terms, I think. We have okay. a responsibility to keep it a safe environment. So there's, there's, there's an interesting piece today by Louis Theroux, who's mm -hmm. also talking about this, and he's saying, I've got three sons, and I need to talk to them about this, and, and I've been asked by so many parents, how do I have this conversation mm -hmm. with, with kids? And here's what you do. Just say, if you see anything online and it worries you or concerns you, come and talk to me. Make sure there's an open door. Don't judge them, don't shame them, and certainly don't try and censor them because they will find a way around it and you'll drive it underground and make it more secretive. You have to be open-minded and that takes guts. I just find that so hard as a mother of a boy. I, I, I'm not sure I'm going to say to my kids any of those things. It just makes me want yeah. to run for the hills, Precisely. honestly. And I, and I do think it's hard because... I, and, I, look, people are going to disagree with me here, but I think a lot of decision-makers and a lot of people in authority are men, probably consumers of large amounts of porn, and perhaps don't have a problem with it. 
and they don't perhaps want to tackle it. And also, there's a level of embarrassment in, in talking about this. You're viewed perhaps as being prudish or old-fashioned yes. if you yeah. are concerned about this. Um, and, you know, it really scares me. My son is six years old, and I look at him and I think, how many years of innocence have we got left before he starts to see graphic, hardcore abuse of women in... Probably about in another five. Uh, objectified five ways. Probably about five years, and that, that devastates me. We've had lots of emails on this. Melanie said, it's well known in teaching that porn's shared amongst children through WhatsApp. It has worryingly become yeah. an Epidemic. If WhatsApp and porn sites were held responsible, like gambling sites are, mm. then we wouldn't have this problem. No young people ever use gambling sites. Mm. Stephen says porn sites et al. Uh, website authorization filters are more for show than effect. To yep. reduce the audience will reduce advertising revenue. And that's also a point, isn't it? These porn industries, there's no vested interest in losing potential consumers with lifelong addictions. No, and I think that's right, right? And that's why it does need government regulation. We can't ask this industry to self-censor. They simply will not. There is no business case for that. But I, I think it is right that we hold them to account. No one knows their platforms better than them. And I, I think there's a level of just a level of simple expectation that we should place on people who are profiteering, oft, often on, as you've said, Isabel, quite abusive content. Not all porn. I think you can have a healthy relationship with porn to some extent, but I think that is violent and extreme content that, that we cannot expose young people to. L let's do both. Let's regulate them and ask them to step up, but also, to your point, Martin, I think, yes, let's have a proper conversation with it's young really people. It's really worth pointing out, and, and one of the things that used to really concern me about this was, was that porn was being weaponised against young men. And they were being told they, they were they were rapists in waiting, and they were dangerous sex predators. Just simply not the case. The vast majority of young men are sensible, switched on, compassionate, wonderful people. But let's not demonise men. Oh, no, it's just exploiting a natural urge. That's the tragedy of it yeah. all, isn't it? Um, okay, let's move on. Yeah.